can change the text, but that's the main. And then below here, which is something I have to implement, so you have also uh, a form where you can get in touch. Mm -hmm. But the idea is that we have both types that are events themselves, you know? So that's something that we need to design and customize. Uh, which is like uh, when you create a post, Instead of creating a normal post, this post has already the possibility to add the direction in Google Maps and also the details of the workshop, who is going to lead it, who is going to be a software group. I don't know if this is what you want. All right. Um, let's see, where do I see... Where can I see this? Can I see this or this is on your, on your, on your own... Is that on your own computer, or can I see actually see that and scroll through that? Well, you can actually, it's in GitHub. So, uh, you have to you have to upload uh, the theme in, in the server or something, but, uh, but the files are there. Aha. Uh -huh. um. Do you know who is, work, who is working? From your side on, on the server and the thing, who is responsible that so that we can uh, share? Okay, um, let's see. All all that needs to happen is that to be put into a, a directory and then the yeah. theme uploaded and stuff like that. You've done that on your own desktop or or where are you running that from? From a server? Oh, I'm running work from a local server. I'm doing it in my computer in a server, but it's basically a server. Okay. Um, you know what? What would be really useful? Do you think that you can? Um, I mean, as far as the themes and yeah, uh, are you pretty firm on that? Like, as far as okay, this is a, a good theme for these these such and such reasons, or? What do you mean? Sorry. No, I'm, I'm asking. I, I cannot. Uh... Yeah, I'm saying, I'm asking if, um, based on what you have for the website, I mean, do you think that the theme, like, uh, is there a lot of um, decision process that came to selecting the theme, or is that you just pick the next best thing? I mean, what was your design uh, rationale for the, well, the theme? The, the first thing I did, because I, 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 I could uh, program HTML and stuff like that, but I started starting the architecture of, of WordPress. Uh, so that took me some time because I was not uh, an expert in WordPress. Yeah. But I understood very good then. Uh, there are different things. Some are for sale. You know, the most pro are for sale. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have researched several things that I would like. I'm interested in a, in a specific theme. Uh, but, yeah, but that's up to us. We have to decide on what are the possibilities. You know, what, okay. what, what what is what you want? Uh, for, because it's not so clear for me as I see it for now. It's as, a, as an environment where you will have a list of events that will be running by us, right? Yeah. And you will be subscribing to them. You'll be basically interacting through events or and then minor uh, interaction through donation or joining the team. But that's not a lot of interaction through this platform, you know? Yeah. Show everybody else. Share your screen again, so so okay. people can see it again. That's pretty yeah. good. So you're saying in the place where you have so this is the the 3D printer website for enterprise for anybody to replicate and to run their own workshops. Um, so if you go scroll down, the map is going to be where? It's going to be here so, under blog. Uh, at the post, uh, I have to yeah yeah. I haven't developed. Because it has to be done, but it's basically a post. Like this is this hello world that you see here is a post. Yeah. Now in mind that instead of that post, you have actually an event as a post, right? Yeah. And then it's that event. You can go to a sub page where you can have more details. But I don't know what is your vision on, on that. But instead of having a theme for everyone to do it, I would suggest to have a common place for anyone that can create it, that want to create it. Can create it here, you know, in this environment. 
Okay. But otherwise, you would have a lot of people having all kinds of uh, worship completely disconnected. Okay. But here would be hitting a post, and then you can capture all that information in one place. You know. That would be good. Yeah, let's let's think about that. I mean, have you thought through that quite a bit, or? Yeah, that's 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 what I. That's the conclusion. That's like, so okay, so let's document all of this. And how about this? Would you be able to at this point? So there's two things. One is the technical installation on a server, so that anyone can do that if they want to to uh, start a website uh, like this WordPress. So think of it kind of like as training for WordPress too. Uh, so can I ask you as the next step to to pro provide the specific instructions on installing this on a server so that I, no, we can I, do a, my question before that one is something that I, I think you have to decide or we should decide uh, good is if you want to have a theme for the 3D printer so that anyone can host anywhere or if you want to have uh, a place from OC, from Open Source Ecology, where anyone that wants to create a, 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 a workshop, they can do it in your platform. Because in mind the dynamics, if you if you have a, a lot of people putting this in different places, how are you going to make them? No, no, that's right. Let's. I mean, platform. let's do that. We can do that, and then of course other people can of course do whatever they want. But I think the capacity to to run a workshop. As a blog, like you can put it all in a blog post and actually make it come off our yeah. like come off our site, so we can publicize it. That's a good idea. So let's let's make that happen. Um, so no, I agree with that. I mean, let's test it. I mean, we can't say much yeah. until we test it. So so but let's do the, it. The main, the main hypothesis of this uh, is that this is a channel for us, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what we want to test is if this is the channel is the is valid. And yeah. We have to improve it. Exactly. We are actually. It's pulling properly from the visitor. That's what we want to check. Yeah. So that's uh, the main idea, right? Yeah. That's. I agree with that. So let's uh, let's do that and let's test it. And it's once again it's it's iterative, rapid iter iterative development to see how this works in practice. So can I ask you to do this? So um, document what you've done so far. Meaning, like the notes on what you said about the architecture. Meaning that people yeah. can do blog posts. How do we implement the actual map? Because there's a lot of technical detail on that. And yeah. you mean the map? I test the map. Uh, for instance, I have been able to put on blocks maps. It's not it's something that is feasible. It's just that we that there are applications for that APIs and everything. It, it works. I test it. Yeah. Uh, but the thing is to create a post so that when you create a post, it yeah. has a standard uh, thumbnail with. Yeah. The deep location uh, and perhaps a button to uh, subscribe to that particular uh, event and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. Which is more more uh, customized post type. But the right. concept is that one, right? So that's. Yeah, I like the concept. That's good. Uh, Okay, and the second thing is so so for actually installing this on a, on a server, can you can you write down those instructions very clearly, paying attention to directory structure, in the case where you're assuming that there's multiple WordPress sites running on that server. So if you do that, I can just throw this up on our server, uh, and I'll be the. Man. Yeah. Sorry, did you say you lost you lost me? Uh, can you hear me? Uh, you, you're muted, Jose. You're muted if you're trying to speak. Jose, are you there? Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Jose looks like he may have some internet issues. So, Jose, uh, basically, what? Are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, oh, oh I can't hear you. Can't hear me? I don't know what happened, man. Uh, can you other guys? Um, oh, it's, cut, it's being cut. Oliver, can you hear me? I'm Chaz. 
Yes, I hear you fine. Yeah, Jose, looks like you got some you got some issues there, man. Um, but what I wanted to to do. Um, yeah, Jose, maybe you can v view this video after the the recording is up. But the idea is, uh, the, the rationale there is, on one side, we teach people how to do various things, like, okay, here's how to throw up a, a, a website, and then specifically the D3D website. So we're teaching people about websites, and then we can test that, Jose, right, on me, me as the average user. Uh, I'm just saying I've got access to a server, and then I can follow your instructions. So I can, I can look at your instructions and verify them to see how good they are in terms of being comprehensive enough for a non-skilled WordPress user to install the website by themselves using your directions. So that would be good. And I'd like you to, to pay attention to directory structure because I know the database and the, uh, all I know is the database and the, the actual files for the WordPress, the actual where the WordPress is installed on your server is not the same. So there's little details there. If you can clarify all that for the people so that this all works because uh, it's not, not su super trivial but it's easy enough that an average uh, literate computer literate user would be able to do it okay so moving on here I'm gonna share the the working team document for today um, and go through some of the main main issues for today we only have like four people on the on the call not sure what happened to everybody but there's the there's the working doc uh, Thursday, June 8 agenda, and since we only have you guys on right now, um, let's go right through that. So the idea is to um, introduction first. Introduction is um, team numbers and how we're doing as a team. We've we've kind of hit of a somewhat of a plateau in terms of our numbers and development effort right now, as you see in uh, the last few days here. It's kind of kind of getting flat there. Uh, it should be going up, but we are going through a lot of uh, team formation kind of duties as far as uh, getting people on board more effectively, uh, getting an established workflow how, for how we work with files, because there's a whole roadmap of things that we're doing, but we're kind of getting caught on documentation and on process. So what I'll do right now is uh, we're working on it, actually. So we got uh, both Dixon and... Uh, Joseph are working on some instructions for onboarding and getting, you know, explaining more quickly to people how to become functional in what we do. Uh, but I'll go over the, the main process of, of why that's important because uh, once we have a very effective way to manage our files and, and work with a construction set, the idea is that the 3D printer construction set is a basis for many, many things. So say you start with a CAD, but once we have the part library, um, this is this thread here is the 3D printer, the the middle. Sorry, um, let me share my screen. Since, okay, uh, I'm on on page. Let me share my screen. Okay, sharing my screen here. I'm on on page here, the 3D printer roadmap on page four of current the, the June 8 working document. But the middle str string here is the 3D printer stra strand, the development things that are happening on that. Uh, but the idea is because we're creating a construction part approach, we can make many different modifications to it. And we want to document a lot of those do modifications. To do that, we need our library of the simplified parts, which is what we were talking about last week and about how do we do file simplifications to do different other versions of the, the 3D printer. And the point is that every version you make, you have to document carefully so that everyone's not figuring out like from scratch because uh, building a complex machine is, has a lot of details. Uh, but once we do have those parts, we can distribute the different, different versions that we can build to different people. Because to give you an example, when we cut out the frames for the 3D printer, we cut out nested frames so we get multiple, in fact, four frames instead of one because they're nested in one another like Russian babushkas so they uh, we make many of them and each one of them has to have a, a complete design for the mechanical part the, the lengths of different things are going to be different little details are going to be different how the things are arranged but altogether we're building 13 10 24 inch 16 inch uh, 8 inch then these other much bigger bigger versions of the 3d printer 
so so each one of them the point is each one of them requires a full design and that each of those things takes time and that's a great task to parallel if we have a, a proven construction set with the files that we all share and we can then modify in FreeCAD so that's the 3d printer strand uh, and then moving up to the CNC torch table strand here above uh, for that we use the one inch axis which is a larger version of the universal axis which we have you can click on that to see the source files for that uh, with the universal controller and then the height controller so there's a whole thing there um, that's the that's a torch table thread and it's a critical machine for any machines made of metal and then the other part related to the 3d printer is the filament maker which leads you to a print cluster which leads you to a print shop a, a, basically a cr cluster, a replicable business model for a printing operation for using a 3D printer to produce parts efficiently and, and, and things that you could actually sell. So, so real enterprise opportunity. Okay. Um, and the way that CNC torch table is involved in it, there are some parts in the in a extruder, the filament extruder and a 3D printer. I mean, so I should add another arrow here. The 3D printer lead the the torch table leads you to more uh, more 3D printers because it cuts out both parts for the 3D printer and parts for the filament extruder, and then all the all these arrows here are all the other heavier machines of the set. Okay, and then in this whole strand of uh, development that we have right now, I've tasked. Um, so this is Abraham with the CNC circuit mill, which we're actually going to build here because we have a guy coming here to do that. But basically it's the same platform just with a spindle. So a spindle for milling circuits. And that, of course, could be used to do things like we can build our own controller for the, the 3D printer or the filament maker. So with what we have here, we can build both the electronics, the mechanics of the 3D printer. And the 3D printer and the torch table are very important because for example even like the brick press or other things other machines they all have some 3d printed parts uh, if you want to do that like in the, on the brick press we use these these holders for the guide basically how the drawer slides back and forth there's a 3d printed part there that holds the rods for the, for uh, moving the drawer back and forth there's different things like that and of course for the tractor you got rubber tracks and other things that you can do very I mean the 3d printer becomes very 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 useful so that's the roadmap and then where do we are on um, uh, so I'm gonna go kinda rearrange these uh, so where are we on the development team work allocation click here that's slide number three but if you click on that uh, you go to the development team um, that's that's this here work allocation document um, so since we don't have too many people we can't check in with too many people so uh, but but the some of the main things going on are the assemblies being produced the simplified uh, assemblies in CAD on the D3D page on the D3D part library page so that's what's being worked on and we really got to check back into that to make sure that we finish that so for example if we go to um, D3D part library which is the critical thing for our um, all the files for the assemb different assemblies with, with which we can make all the var variations of the 3D printer. Uh, here they are. So this is the individual parts on the D3D part library page, and here is the assemblies. So, for example, what I'm seeing here in this document, well, okay, that wasn't done here. So here we're looking for these to be completed, basically simplifying the XYZ axes and other parts. This is the simplified CAD file. Uh, this this pink column here that's we need to fill that up to have all the parts the simplified parts that we can use for development okay that's not not moving forward as well as we like here um, on extruder we're going through the let's look at um, just where we are in the extruder part but we've been going through the bill of materials I know Cassie has done a good bill of materials on the extruder part but I think we have to check in on where we are on that specifically um, that's filament it's called Lyman extruder there's the Lyman filament extruder for making uh, 3d printing filament but it also gets kind of the nom nomenclature is a little confusing in the sense that the filament extruder 
that's not the same extruder as on the 3D printer. The extruder on the 3D printer does the actual printing. So there's a dis distinction between the filament extruder and just a plain extruder. Um, so that's, uh, we've got the bill of materials. We've got the work here on the part library, Lyman, Lyman filament extruder part library. So for example, Dixon has, so we're working on that here on the filament extruder. There's a whole part library of 3D printed parts that we're organizing and so forth so we've got uh, we can build the, the filament extruder uh, effectively so that's that the only other thing I want to bring up on the, um, the 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 filament maker 3d printer part is the OSE extruder so I'm gonna just point that out to you and we don't have anyone working on that right now but basically Here's the industry standard comparison or component. This is the off-the-shelf 3D printer filament extruder, not filament extruder, the 3D printer extruder for printing. It's uh, it's called E3D. It's the E3D hot end. So that's what I'm talking about, the, the hot end of the filament extruder. Um, so what you see here is the open source version. Like if you were to, to talk about doing a very low cost version of this, uh, extruder for the 3d printer how do you do it you can take a threaded rod you can put washers on it and you can thread that into an aluminum or steel block and you can do your own uh, 3d printer extruder construction set because at that point you can make this as long as you like you can add more heating elements to this so you can and then put a nozzle that's got like the largest nozzles that they make right now off the shelf are 1.2 millimeters uh, for like super fast, They're, it's called a volcano nozzle by E3D. Like they make one for this, that's uh, 1.2 millimeters. But then we can go possibly even larger for much faster printing, like 1.5 or 1.8, possibly two millimeters um, for extrusion. But the idea here is you do your own little threaded rod. You put a uh, put washers and smaller washers to get this. This what happens here is the um, heat exchanger basically the cooling part the, the hot end is here the cooling happens here with a fan but you can make one of these things from off-the-shelf washers and threaded rods and things but it would take some design because you got to get the exact right parts and then you can make a you know say the heater block you can put like two heating resistors in it or you can extend the um, the threaded rod so you can actually put two of these heater blocks so it's a modular construction set at the level of the actual extruder so that that could be done too um, that's just one more thing if you talk about a very low cost thing uh, I mean the the extruder itself is very inexpensive it's only like you can get one of these for as little as like fifteen dollars I've seen I think but this allows you to do more flexibility like lifetime design in the sense that you, you can fix it if it breaks and you're using common off-the-shelf parts so that's the advantage but the price advantage is not not so much unless of course you go to other versions that you know say it's larger or different then it doesn't exist or if it does exist it's quite expensive so definitely the there is a good case for the uh, the approach of DIY and here we can probably you know reduce that price you know if it's 15 I mean we might as well we might be able to build this for as little as five dollars and if it's all steel like it only weighs a fraction of a pound so literally if you're rolling your own steel at the end of the day you can build this for a few cents in actual real steel costs which are currently on the market steel is a dollar a pound so uh, the absolute minimum cost limit of such a structure here would be under a dollar because the steel to make it is under under one pound that's just an aside there okay so that's that's where we are um, maybe we can touch back in as far as um, where all of us are well here we don't have too many people but uh, so I think we can go right to the maybe we can start talking about the the CNC torch table right here since we've got um, Carl and Chaz Carl, <laughs> Carl. We got Oliver I don't know why you use Carl there Oliver so so uh, I've seen some excellent work by Oliver uh, on his log uh, so if we go uh, let's see if we go to the dev team there's uh, click on Oliver's log but I've seen that he's really done excellent work on look at this basically the open source ecology height controller amazing work man this is good um, 
So I think I'm going to let you talk about this. So this is the controller of the height. The, the, the CNC torch has to follow the height of, a, of metal. The metal is going to warp on you, possibly as you do the work on the metal. So you need to follow the height to get the high quality cut. So this is what we're doing here. Using this device, we're controlling the Z-axis independently to follow the surface of the metal very carefully as we do the CNC torch cutting. Uh, so maybe I can have you, Oliver, fill us in exactly where you are. Um, I look forward to getting this circuit from you so I could actually test it here. And we've got the onboard controller on there. I, what I'm seeing there is the stepper driver con uh, um, connection right there. So this is beautiful. And I want you to explain to us a little more how you did this and what your next steps are. Go ahead. Um, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. This is great. Yeah, okay, um, as you can see in the picture, I have uh, on the silk screen uh, marked which interfaces are on it, so that it is a little bit self-explainable. I just want to go to yeah. it. You um, pointed me towards that the sensor iron uh, ends up in a BNC connector, so I added here a BNC connector instead yeah. of a screw terminal, what, what yeah. I had first in mind. Yep. But, uh, yeah, it looks good. Um, then um, uh, uh, in the upper uh, edge, there you see two green connectors, uh, which are for the TB6600 TB driver controller, which I own one, and Chess is working on the same thing. Yep. And um, you see there the EN deer and step. Step is marked on the controller, uh, on the driver controller um, case as pulse. Also step and pulse is the same thing. And then I have a power connector where I have um, put it, the power through the board to give uh, a, a connection for the 12 volts. That's the okay, two, right there. Uh, two pin, the jumper for uh, connector that is for giving the driver controller uh, stepper driver controller um, the necessary power so yeah. and this power is what we uh, can uh, gather from the uh, upper left white uh, connector where you can see there's 12 volts and 5 volts and uh, yeah, my idea was to use simply a personal computer power supply, which has these, uh, I think they, they are called Molex connectors. Yeah. And so they fit, fit in into that. Uh, one could think about to, instead of this Molex connector, use uh, maybe uh, um, um, these green one screw terminals, which are also used for connecting the RAM board. It's a question whether you want to cut off a cable of your PC um, power supply if you use one. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that, uh, here I, 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 I set the Molex connector because I think it's um, it doesn't destroy the PC uh, um, um, power supply if you use one. Uh, I, I think this is a task that can pretty pretty well done with older PC uh, supplies like uh, in the 200 watt range or what older stuff you may have floating around in your stock. Yeah. So. Yeah, I actually don't have a lot of those around. Um, let's see. What's the easiest to do there? If you you're assuming the PC power supply, I think a lot more. Like when we buy them, are those easy to get off the shelf? Because typically what people do is get those ones where you connect the wires to them. The, yeah, the, the other ones, ones. The silver ones. Uh, which is easier to get? Can you get those PC? I haven't, I haven't checked uh, yeah. that. Yet. I think maybe, I don't know, I'd, I, immediately I would say just leave it as uh, the screw, ter screw down terminals. Because that's more flexible. Yeah. You can use that with any anything. Otherwise, you need an extra connector yeah. there. Yeah, um, was, but this I is was thinking the same. Uh, it's it's uh, yeah. Yeah. One, one could do that. I, I mean, I, I haven't checked that yet, but maybe the footprint is even the same for these. I, I haven't measured it, but uh, yeah. maybe they are even the same and they are simply exchangeable. But I'm I'm going to check that. But. We can do also this. Uh, what I'm talking about was the screw terminals, which you have, um, which have also an angle, and which are used on the ramps. 
normally to connect the ramps, so that would be then conform with that, maybe. Yeah. Uh, would you be able to use Go. this uh, this one, this logo? logo? On, can you add that on there? Um, yep, theoretical one could, and I have already downloaded it. Um, and then I have read a little bit in the tutorial how to put that in, and it is somehow possible, but it was uh, some steps, and I was on other oh. things. So I have it already there. I have um, um, uh, created a, a GitHub repository where all the sources are lying around, yes. and this logo is already there, and yeah, it simply needs a little bit of time to check how this must be converted to to get it into it. It's it's not oh, I a see. big thing. It, it is definitely possible in general. Yeah. Just a little bit of work. Oh, because I thought you already put the open source hardware symbol in there, but you're saying that already came yeah. with the with the keycad. Because yes. you already have the. This is part of the standard li libraries in right. keycad. Uh huh. Right. So that's a standard. So we have to import our logo into keycad. Yeah. Uh, very nice. And and um, what is this thing here? The panel and UX. That's the. Um... Yeah, um, I I think I want to uh, come to that a little bit later. Maybe let's first uh, talk about the yeah. Jumper Five and Jumper Seven Six things. The Jumper yeah. Five is yeah. uh, where you can connect an end, end stop. I personally like. You mean J Four end stops, but a mechanical end stop would also work. That's normal stuff oh, like you yeah. have on the ramp boards also. In in okay. principle, this is a little RAM board with just one channel and the capacitive sensor interface. Yeah. So yeah. and uh, yeah. Yes. Jumper seven is um, what I I think um, to use for a job dial because you once mentioned you want to be able to manually do things with that maybe adjust the height and uh, I understand that this makes sense. Uh -huh. So. Um, uh, my first idea was to use simply a potentiometer. Yes. That's why I um, connected this um, this um, um, jumper with uh, this um, terminal with uh, analogos analog pin input yeah. ports on the Arduino Nano. Yep. Uh, but um, then it came to to me that uh, there are rotary encoders. I have uh, put a few links there in my log page or the discussion page onto it. And uh -huh. um, if you go to my log page, maybe, and then, uh, and now it's, uh, it's on the discussion page. Uh, here, if you are on the top of my log, then there is a um, thing, yeah, they are discussion. Above Oliver Lock is discussion. And oh, discussion? I, I have linked that. Yes, this one. Yeah. So, and if you scroll a little bit deeper. So, jog wheel? Rotary yeah, encoder? a little bit deeper. Ah, no, yeah, there it is, jog wheel, you know, yeah. Um, I have uh, found two possibilities. One is a rotary encoder, which you can get from Adafruits for about five dollars or something. But uh -huh. they are, uh, in fact, uh, getting for cheaper. They are, I think, about one point five dollars or something. And these are with uh, twenty-four pulses um, per revolution, and can. For, for example, combined with a wheel, which I have also linked there, a uh, nice, ah yeah, this is a rotary encoder from Adafruit, and like I said, you can get this without the knob for about $1.5 or something, and uh, this could be combined with that wheel where I have, uh, if, if you go back to my discussion page and then uh, click on um, number link link three, then we can see a picture from the um, from the wheel, which I have seen on on Hacker Days. It was a Hacker Day from a Hacker Days project, whereas so, the Hacker Days project there it just deals about how to can a Bluetooth uh, thing or something. But that's not uh, Tommy, what I have uh, in mind. I would first do it. Yeah, yes. can I can I interrupt you for a second? So the rotary encoder, you're saying you'd like to manually control the height, and 
why do you need an encoder as a basically an encoder how, how does it work this is for manual control oh, of the height explain yeah, that it's it's just a haptical thing the encoder when if you turn it round produces pulses and these pulses have to be counted by the Arduino and so he knows uh, whether it should go deeper or higher okay and so this is a little bit different from a potential meet uh, where you have wait wait so you're yes, saying what? are you actually um, encoders the way I understand encoders is they're actually reading the position of an of a regular motor as opposed to a stepper motor because the stepper already you know where you are with a stepper yes, then yes, are yes. you using this as an encoder to get the position or to set the position to set the position it's not really the same like the encoder okay this is exactly different the same like the encoder and stepper motor uh, this is really for give some pulses and yeah. um, I, have, I have linked another one which is more nicely designed and uh, looking better from steel and the other one is uh, more expensive, is about $20 and uh, looks better but it makes 100 pulses and my, uh, my um, imagination is that the one with the lower pulses, with the 24 pulses, is maybe better because um, I mean, you do one revelation, and if you have much pulses on that, then uh, the height controller goes a big or a bigger or uh, yeah bigger distance up or down, and that's maybe unwanted if you want to fine tune it. Meaning here you can make a full um, a revelation revolution and have just um, 24 steps. And with a, uh, I guess the 100 one is a little bit too coarse, but that was just a um, um, and uh, what I'm thinking about. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, so you'd set the height, so for example, you'd, the logic there would be like, depending on which, yeah. which setting it is, that just determines the height, that's all. Yeah, the, the, the thing uh, gives uh, pulses, like I said, and they are simply digital pulses. And this one does 24 if you do one revolution, and the other one does 100 if you do one uh, yeah. revolution. And these pulses are simply counted by the, by the Arduino, meaning if you want to go it more, you turn more. Theoretically, you can't turn it forever, yeah, and then it's a question how the Arduino will count uh, or evaluate this this pulses. Yeah, so uh -huh. it's all uh, on the Arduino side, so the control so, or the interpretation. Of the yeah. Pulses. So what you what you're doing there is you're turning the knob to get the torch height higher or lower. That's all. Yeah or to tell the system that you want to go higher and lower yeah, and um, then it's doing so and it shows you then on the display where you are yeah like that. yeah I, I guess you want to have the, the knob for or the dog wheel for adjusting the torch in an optimum height before you start and then later on you say this height is the, the value which you have preset and uh, with the distance which you should uh, then follow or uh, keep if, uh -huh. if the yeah. material is uneven yeah yeah or or upon st yeah 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 no this is that's really good i mean you you are going all the way here with all that's required yeah that's really good um Okay. Do you want to continue on? Did you mention what J4 was? Is that the power? Is that the power? What's J4? Can Can you go to my log page then? Yeah. Then can I see the thing? Yeah, I, w I was talking about J4. This one right here. What does that do? Um, the J4. Uh, yeah, just 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 a second, please. I, I must look for it my, on, on my staff. Um, to, 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 to. Wow. Huh. Yeah, this is this would be a great case for using this as a study case of um, designing one of these things. So this is a like a pretty general design problem that I mean what you have that's pretty pretty
pretty advanced. Uh, but it's also could could be like once you document every single bit of this, people actually can go in there and modify different things as needed. So yeah, of course. Great. Uh, and J4 is is a power supply uh, for the for the TB6600 driver controller. This is where the 12 volts came. They came in on the Molex and then go across the board and end up there. The the, the main power supply from the Molex uh, pin uh, produces 12 volt and 5 volts and 5 volt is for supplying the, the Arduino and stuff and this 12 volt line uh, is going through yeah is going through uh, I've made a very thick trace because there is maybe more amperage because this line contains the power for driving the motor yeah and that is uh, J4 is a connector for that. So I thought then, the um, I thought yeah. the stepper driver was like 12 to 20 to 48 volts. Uh, okay, I have just only uh, used it with 12 volts and uh, it worked fine. I mean, just for lifting up that little torch head is maybe not so. You need not very much. Oh, okay. Um, so you just you're just saying you don't need not much torque. So me we are maybe fine with that. I, I was just thinking uh, right. of using C uh, power supply. But if you use a 48 volt power supply, then you can maybe do it also on this. Um, um, yeah, uh, I, it doesn't matter because that's an independent this, um, uh, supply. Yeah. That's good reason why we maybe should not, not use the Molex connector, but a screw terminal to have more flex. Yeah, because I mean that can handle. I mean that can handle the forty-eight volts, right? No problem, right? If you want, if you want to do this for I other things. Yet tried it with forty-eight volts. If so, I would make the copper trace a little bit thicker by maybe uh, soldering some some uh, um, tin onto it. Uh, but uh, what I did also is. Um, um, I made a, a little bigger uh, wire, uh, the hole which um, leads it through the downside, yeah. because I had in mind that theoretically one can solder a, a thick wire on it to have more um, yeah. more um, thicker cable yeah, for bigger amperage. But I'm I've, I assume that this would be fine for the yeah. task for, for oh, yeah. lifting up the torch cable. Definitely, yeah. definitely. I'm just saying, like, we want to design it to be all, at all times scalable. Uh, so that say you have a very large yep. thing there, then you can handle. It. But I mean, like, if you had 48 volts, it doesn't necessarily mean the current would be higher, right? So, yeah. that in fact, might be lower. Uh, that's a good point, and that makes the amperage lower. But I, I guess even with um, with uh, 12 volts, yeah, we we are fine with the amperage. Yeah, I mean, yeah. how much wattage does a motor have? Let's say even if it has 60 watts, yeah, that mean with 12 amperage, yeah, uh, 12 volts, you can have about 20 20 amperes, and that's what an uh, old PCB power supply can deliver easily. Yeah, yeah, no problem. No, no, no I was just wondering about that detail. Okay. Uh, this is great. Um, but uh, but anyway, you said uh, a scale label, and I'm completely with you on that. On that, and I also have in mind that theoretically one day it should be able to lift heavier weights. Yeah, and Definitely. I mean I have just um, drawn the trays across the board and stuff. Theoretically, it is also possible to give it an extra line. This is just a design thing to, to have it maybe easier to handle instead of have a lot of different wire endings and, yeah. and things there. Yeah, but yeah. there are a lot of lots of possibilities. It was just a, a point to start with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 This is great. Yeah. And uh, great. just one more so, thing. Uh, you were able to... Are these actually... You have been able to do this within step. You you exported step into FreeCAD, or you didn't do that yet. Um, sorry. Can can you um uh, can yeah. you um step? Can you repeat that? It came shredded. Yeah. Uh, were you able to export a step file from the KeyCAD into FreeCAD? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Great. Um. 
that is generally possible and uh, I did it myself yet with the um, uh, .wrl, the vrml files, but um, a friend of mine has, yeah, Martin, yeah, I told you about Martin, yes. he has made um, uh, a thing where he exported this with it with a step format. And I have taken this and made you a little video on that, which yes, you yes. can find on the OSE networks. Yes, or yes. Maybe you have seen it. I've seen it. There. I've seen it. I was wondering if you actually did that with this file already. I did it not yet with with, with this file, but okay. the, the video is uh, is a living proof, or I is is, is made what, what what I did with the the other file, and it is a living proof. That uh, if we re-import the um, uh, step format from KiCad into FreeCAD, then we have uh, in the tree uh, single parts which we can then use to move or manipulate or something. And that was the the, the question or the discussion point. Yeah. Yes, so exactly. It should be in general also uh, possible to do it with this file. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the That's question really is how often you. Want do the FreeCAD stuff, uh, the, the, the things like that, manipulation like that within FreeCAD. I assume the most case will be that you can use the, the um, 3D uh, version of, of a like monolithic uh, PCB and because you want to design a case around it, what you later put out of your printer or something. Uh -huh. So in this case, I would probably prefer uh, uh, .wrl or vrml uh, simply because I like it but step is also uh, 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 an option yeah. if it's wanted to manipulate single parts. Well I was thinking uh, that I think some explode part animation or build videos within FreeCAD of which parts go yeah. on first that would be useful within FreeCAD. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. It's possible with a step format. Yeah, excellent. Mm -hmm. So, and then there's one thing left on the PCB that is uh, in the upper left corner, uh, <coughs> the UEXT port, which I've um, marked with panel, meaning user interface panel, what I have in mind. All right. I mean, if you, if you want to uh, um, lift the torch with the drop dial, then you need, of course, a display which shows you where you are, for example. But on the on that user panel, there should also be, let's say, five uh, buttons uh, for the usual navigation stuff. It's a universal thing, which you can use for, let's say, doing some settings or whatever. Yeah, yeah. no, it's beautiful. And, yeah, and the UEXT is a kind of, uh, what's the word, non-official standard from a company named Olimax. Maybe you've heard, I think they are Italian PCB uh -huh. company, old one. And um, yeah, this is a, a, a nice, well-defined thing, so that's why, why I used it and I think this is sufficient. And uh, I want to do the panel with um, one or maybe even two OLED displays, which are sort of cool these days. <laughs> I like them. Yeah. And uh, very, very less energy, co energy consuming and stuff. Uh, and um, the point is, uh, the, the, the panel is one of my uh, immediate next steps, simply for the reason because I need exactly that kind of panel for another project, the liberal solar project. And uh, I think it's clever to clap two flies with one catch. Uh, yeah. to, to design the board and use it in uh, two projects, what also means that the user panel thing is a little bit of universal thing, which you can use for universal purposes, so it's uh, not not um, wrong to, to have that also a little bit in mind. By the way, the whole um, uh, PCB, what I made here, is also sort of universal. I mean, given the case that we never would get the CapSense stuff running, then you can simply leave that out and have a, a pretty nice uh, one-channel um, uh, interface. Yeah, I mean, of course, we will get it running, but uh, 
just to the, to to illustrate what I mean with the thing well, is universal usable. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm thinking if if we if the cap sense fails for some reason, it's also possible to do manual control with with a guy just sitting there and moving the torch up and down as they see, which would be harder but but doable. Yeah, but and, I think and for testing. I'm, I'm still optimistic on that, and uh, we make this PCB just to prove that, and uh, if we are lucky, then everything runs from the first moment, or maybe there are some problems which we will solve. I'm, I'm not expecting that we end up with, with that is totally not running, but um, we will prove that with that, or we will test it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and um, well, that's... That's so far what I did. After, yeah, and I, I, I made the I made the GitHub repository for that, um, and uh, with with which contains all uh, sources and stuff, and which is the um, um, condition for uh, doing versioning control. If if we work with more people on that, mm -hmm. this is what we in all other projects also want to use uh, 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 earlier or later if we want to do versioning control. I mean, GitHub is standard stuff so far. Um, but uh, what I wanted to say is you asked what, where I am now and where I'm going to. And uh, for me, is I have, I have uh, written some points onto my agenda in my uh, log page discussion page. What, what you have seen before, but the immediately next three steps I'm going to do is first step, I will export the Gerba files from the KiCad stuff and uh, order some some words, like, like we have said in the written email. And um, secondly, I will complete uh, the list on Mauser, which Abraham has started, and I will now add the remaining parts on that, and then order that, and then, yeah, like like we said in the email, I will send uh, one kit to to Abraham, and then we'll soldier them and test them, and hopefully everything is running fine, and then I will send one uh, the one PCB towards you. So this is my second step and the third step is um, to start with designing the uh, user panel which I need as I said before in another project too. Excellent. As far as the sending over a PCB board to here that's after you test it or before? Y yes that's my idea I mean uh, in the, that moment or as soon as I've soldered the last part on the board, I mean, the tension arises and I'm quite curious. Will it run? Will it give me some signals and stuff? My only concern or question regarding this is um, um, the sensor. Yeah? Um, is there some very special um, 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 needed or can I do this maybe with a loop which I make from a thick copper or iron? Wire, if you you can about you that? can you can make it with anything. The question is, what are the values you're going to be getting back? It would be good to do like a like a like a basic analysis of what the actual size and geometry should be. But what I would do is I would take yeah. copy the shape of the professional versions as closely as possible, or just even possibly. Uh, just buy one that's a commercial version. I'm not, I don't know how much they are, but it should be such yeah, that we. I mean, I can yeah. start with something. Yeah, yeah, you can. I, I mean, I can start with some thick wire cable. Yeah. Get something out. If not, then my next question would be maybe a commercial one is doing and this one not. Yeah. So uh, I have some nice thick cables uh, from copper, but I've thicker ones from from iron and I guess these are fine for the time maybe you can tell me what is the, the diameter of the loop uh, from your version which you have and then we start with this yeah there's a I can show you one uh, there's one that we've already done at some point um, At the moment, I hear you only a little 
little bit shredded. Yeah, there was a there was an example. There was an example of a pickup ring that we have done already. Uh, Chuck Chuck H did that. So let me see. Um, if you look at look at Chuck log, he he was working on a height controller before. He just did a simple ring, and uh, I think they were struggling with the signal how much how how the signal actually came in there um but if you go to chuck log go through his stuff with the tar torch height control and he he showed an example of a pickup loop that he did which was just a copper wire i think or is that wire bent around we should do something that's that's easily <clears throat> easily doable like with regular parts like for example taking a washer some kind of a large washer and bending it and but using a standard part to start with you know yeah does that make sense okay, yeah 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 um, um, yeah you, your last sentences came a bit shredded on me but i've seen chuck logs and i will uh, check that in detail what is written there and uh, yeah, we will we'll try it with an easy DIY sensor and then see uh, <coughs> um, yeah what what brings us uh, further. That's really good. Mm -hmm. Very good. So anything else on that? So so the next steps yeah. are for you to do those. Um, and yeah. you will just just to. So far. Let me let me ask you so. Can you your own? Yeah. Uh, can, like, once you test. Sorry, you are totally shredded. Oh. Yeah. Let me type it in. Yeah. You, you came totally shredded at the moment. I mean, it's no big problem. I can later uh, review that on the recording. So. But at the moment, I, I don't hear you very much. Right. Let me. Uh, I, I sent the link. So, so you will send the board after you test it, or before before you test it, so that we're all troubleshooting it. After. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I would send you. It's after testing and running. But uh, if there are problems, then will I, I, I send you it as is as it is that you can help to find the problems or the bug or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That is really the good. Testing, quick thing. Yeah. 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 Um, and I'm wondering just the one thing, like you did all this work on it already. If you disappeared, we lose a lot of the design rationale work and everything. Uh, is there a case for like, how are you considering documenting the design rationale and the steps like tutorials of how people can modify this do you see that happening in the future or do we want to have somebody work with you on that um, yeah. I, uh, I'm open for everything but I think um, the, the best asset what you have in such a case is the github repository which should be complete and contain everything I mean everything I could uh, talk or, or teach to people is uh, to do something with with KiCad. I mean, and for this, I would recommend doing a KiCad tutorial like yes, like yes. I did and uh, well, exercising. Uh, if if that's the case, then yeah. Ah, okay, but um, I see you. You are right. A little bit more documentation stuff is maybe not wrong. Um, is it okay if I make um, in the wiki uh, documentation yes. page for that? Yes. Yes. What I would what I would ask you since you're well qualified to do that is to draw up a detailed design rationale or or like some diagrams of okay what's this doing there why why yeah, you made yeah. certain choices like as much of that detail so that you can say okay we we started with a circuit from Paul and that's what we think it does and you know describe as much of that functionality as we know and then go from there how you made the other choices to 
put in the other components, which to you are kind of obvious. It's like, okay, you need power, you need a little monitor, you need this and that. But if you, exp if you, um, the, the idea is there to, to explain to a novice the kind of thinking that you're going through to design the whole board. Yeah. Yes, understood. Uh, yeah, it's what I would call a kind of survey diagram where yes. here and there a few details are pointed out. Basically, yes. all this stuff, what I told you and the other guys here within the session, uh, in, a, in yes. a good surveyable compact form or as a yeah okay I, yes. I understand that I, w I will do something like that I'm going to do that on a and I, I will do a wiki page on that from which I also uh, set a link towards the earlier version from Paul and then uh, do this documentation stuff on that page excellent yes yes please do that okay well thank you so much this is a uh, excellent work so I mean if we get that going on a torch table that will be some one fancy torch table that we will have okay. so that will be good mm -hmm. um, okay my pleasure um, can i still add one thing which yes, is please. off topic concerning the torch table but which i wanted to tell yes please it's it's just a, it's just a short thing um before you talked about the e3d and um I, I own several E3Ds because I, I think they are well, but I wanted to point you towards that point that the um, ECD hot end has a certain, um, um, yeah, like profile. It's uh, well developed. I'm, I'm not so completely enthusiastic about your idea mm -hmm. uh, to do that with the washers and stuff, mm -hmm. um, and uh, mainly because. Um, you can get today even very cheap uh, Chinese versions of that. I've recently bought one, uh -huh. and I want to test it. My other E3D are original versions, yeah. and this one I have bought for $8, and yeah. that's really not much. And if it works well as the other ones, then it's probably easier to take that as a ready-made part uh -huh. than to try to resemble it with the washers because in the washers you have not this special uh, profile. The E3D project was made from, I, I think, two Indian guys, student guys, which had, have really scientifically um, yeah. uh, developed this special profile. I, I don't know whether this is a magic secret of, of it, but... Um, so uh, yeah. I just wanted uh, to point towards the possibilities that if you're not using an original part but a Chinese copy, then uh, it's uh, cheap enough that maybe the work uh, is not um, uh, worse to, to do it with waters on your own. And uh, I have bought one and I will test it. Yeah. And uh, I will then later tell you, yeah, it's good. It's a good uh, a replacement for that or if there are problems and I will report that also yeah uh, that's a good point and what are your thoughts on on the scalability though because the one thing we wouldn't be able to get out of those nozzles like say we wanted to go from 1.2 to like 1.6 or 1.8 I mean then we'd be hard-pressed with the current designs you know Okay, I understand, but in this case, I would suggest uh, to handle that, like you always said, if in doubt, we use the end version, the AND version, and that means for for the um, designer of the of the extruder, the 3D printer extruder, you can keep in mind the, the measurements of the E3D, and uh, yeah, then at the first moment, he is fine. Yeah, you're saying that, just make sure I'm catching what you're saying. Follow what E3D is doing, of course. I mean, get their engineering and copy that as close as possible because after that, we are going to have to understand the temperature profiles and so forth. One thing that can help with that is actually FreeCAD because it's got thermal simulations in there. So that's one thing. But the other thing is, I'm not saying this would be easy. I'm saying that we'll probably have to do it if we want to go to bigger sizes and things like that and of course work out the details but I also believe that once you have an understanding the details like when you know which 
which parameters are critical, you can pretty much design that almost intuitively because I think that um, especially if you do, it's called robust design. Uh, I don't know if you've heard the term, but robust design means that you can you can design in a way that's very forgiving of the parameters and stuff like that. So so there's different ways to go, and and it's definitely a development project, and we don't we wouldn't may not work on the first try. But uh, I think in the long term, I think we can't we can't avoid doing it. Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, I I've not heard about that, but yeah, it's it's okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so let's move on to the. I mean, we kind of covered the the torch table quite well. Let's see. Um. Chaz, do you th have anything to add on a on a torch table, uh, the the control the wiring of the the driver? Have you actually gotten to test that or anything like that? Or uh, sorry, you came shredded. I I did not uh, heard that. Yeah, this is a question to Chaz if he's got anything to update us with on the um, the larger stepper controller. I wired the stepper controller and stuff, um, as according to the picture that I got last week. Um, so this is what I have so far. Um, I need to figure out to enable a wire as far as where it goes based off of um, my old picture. I tested the, the stepper motor and found out which uh, um, pairs to connect. Um, but right now I need to figure out which, um, why, or, uh, where the enable wire goes to. Um, let me find that other picture. Mm-hmm. Are you keeping up? Yeah. Yeah, okay. My what? No, that's good. That's good. We can pull off a so diagram. Let me get mm -hmm. this other picture out. So um, if you remember like the, the German picture where it shows the ramps and the TB6560 with the motor drives, there's yeah. that enable connection that's in green, Yep. Um, enable negative, and it's like uh, some kind of question mark for where it connects to. I need to figure out where that connects on the step or the ramps board. Um, I wasn't sure if like you or Oliver might have an idea as far as where that connects to. Oliver to the rescue, unmute, unmute yourself. I don't know where the enable goes offhand. Um, oh, I think he he popped off. I don't know. I have to look into that more. And uh, next step would be to connect it to power. Let's see what you got here. So connect it to power. Let's see. You got a. Yeah, I also have to mm -hmm. power one. And a computer, and you should be able to run that stepper motor and we know that we can use these bigger drivers off the ramps board all right yeah yeah sorry I, I've just uh, been thrown out um, I've, I've checked this point also and I've made in my discussion pay page a uh, remark especially for chess um, where I found some uh, material how these uh, should be connected and um, there are basically two ways you can connect all the uh, uh, plus uh, wires like uh, common plus or you can connect all the ground wires like common ground and um, I just give you a link just a second please Yeah. And for you, Abraham, look at this. What I think you might have seen that from Oliver, but he just is going for way forward on the 
the stepper, the height controller, which is awesome. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's see what. Yeah, I've sent, I've, I've put the link in the chat window, and there you can uh, find uh, the materials, which are uh, documents, which uh, shows the thing uh, quite good. Okay, that's really good. Thank you. Um, okay. Excellent, and we can um, <clears throat> conclude that. Um, to also just finish up with uh, the the CNC torch, Abraham, do you have any <clears throat> any comments regarding the torch table discussion? Because <clears throat> next would be the filament maker work. <clears throat> And right now, what I'm doing, sorry if you have echo, I don't found this headphones right now. Can you hear me properly? Yes, yes, it's pretty good. <clears throat> Can you hear me? <clears throat> okay. Yes. Okay, what I say is like, eh, I'm struggling with free cuts and I'm having not so much success with it yet. Uh -huh. And at the same time, I'm doing a lot of fast prototyping right now. Uh -huh. and I have a low profile. I'm not doing. I cannot do much right now, but I'm, I'm waiting for the prototype for the board. When he sent me, when he will send, I will start <coughs> mounting it and testing it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what more can we do right now. Yeah. About that. Right. No, no. That's good. That's good. I think. Uh, I think Oliver is doing a great job on on moving that forward with all the designs. So. I think we're pretty good, pretty good on that that point. So, yeah, yeah. I think uh, the difficult part will be actually testing it and getting that all to work out, and then we can join efforts to do that. But I think that's going extremely well on that. Yeah, awesome job, as we say here. Yep. So next, um, so let's let's transition to the to the filament maker, given that the torch table work is, is going forward and very important, which which requires that we do the one inch version of the torch, the basically the universal axis, the larger version, uh, which is why, you know, for example, Abraham, if you end up doing that, like collaborating on that further, that might be one thing that you can do within FreeCAD. If you, I mean, try to continue on the, on a FreeCAD, like what, I, what I'm gonna do is uh, I've I've written that instructional on file simplification. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but I'm gonna. I think what I'll do is do a very nice instructional on on how to um, go through the whole process of file simplification and what's important there, so that we can all work with a construction set approach of designing using simpler files. So there's work I have to do there. And talking about documentation and and progress on that. Um, before we go to go into the filament maker, Joseph, do you want to pipe in a little bit uh, just on um, your observations and and uh, the onboarding process? Yeah, can you hear me all right? Yes, we can. Um, yeah. I spoke with a few people, and my experience is that <clears throat> um, a lot of the um, a lot of the, the steps we need to take to get on are relatively simple, but they were scattered through the email and scattered through the wiki. So I basically just wanted to consolidate them. Yeah. Um, most of us had like 12 or 15 different wiki pages open at the same time. Um, so I wanted to channel uh, from the welcome email, uh, which I re-edited, um, re I wanted to channel everybody to a single new developer page yeah. that walks them through all the steps and has... Uh, help resources for whatever they need so that if they don't need it they can just skip those and move along um, right so the uh, I'll link I'll link to the new developer page uh, or call it new developer orientation um, yeah I'd like to get some feedback on um, with the thought of then filling linking in that to <clears throat> whatever 
um, whatever tools are part of the sort of universal OSC develop, you know, developer bundle, yeah. and just start yeah. uh, developing the 101, you know, the 101 series. Um, right. So I was sort of, you know, talking to Dixon about that. Yep. Yep. No, that's good. That's good. And the next yeah, so thing. The, the short, the short Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. So sorry. The, the 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 big picture is just welcome people in the email, funnel everybody to the new developer page, which has all the steps they need to do to get to set to get set up, and then if if they need help brushing up on any particular thing, whether that's FreeCAD or whether that's wiki documentation or um, anything else, to have those links there. So some of the the links in those are not developed yet. You know, getting like right. the Caden Live, uh, like OS. Caden Live 101 developed and, you know, Wiki 101 and that sort of thing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. That's, yeah. No, that's really good. And then once, so we have this developer orientation and then we create a video, a quick, quick video that points people to all these resources. That's the idea, right? Yeah, the video is basically just going to be. Um, I just did sort of a, a read through and a, uh, sort of a test, um, but basically the new developer page is just a series of steps, all action items and help links. And the video, I want to embed a video up top that yep. just goes through the exact same material, but just provides visuals, um, visuals of the same thing. Yep. Um, and the dry run comes out at like two and a half minutes or so. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So I've got the script. I've got a script. I need to. Um, clean it up a little bit, but I've got the script for that. Um, let me add the link. <laughs> so basically just, it, it goes through the same steps in the same order so that when you go, if, if somebody is more visual, um, you know, they can just watch that and then uh, speed everybody up going through their, their to-do list the first week. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's, that's pretty good. Yeah. Very good. So, so I'll take a look at that and, and give you any feedback. And yeah, then we can get rolling on just, just finishing this and doing it. So... So we're more effective, yeah. And we'll continue okay. continue on on this process of assessing. Okay, what's the number one thing that we need right now? And maybe that, that's a question we can ask to everybody right now. As far as effective work on a team, uh, what is the number one thing that, like for example, if there were, there were an instructional right now that we could produce, what would that be? Um, so, I'm actually going to link to the working document from today's meeting uh, I'm gonna set up a page there so take a look at that link but okay page number four I'm gonna say highest priority training material right now what what would you people think this is um, I know I know the free CAD here let me get this proper here so what do we think that is I mean there's definite so there's on onbo basic onboarding there's definitely stuff around FreeCAD like um, if people don't feel comfortable about FreeCAD there's a certain workflow that I actually started to get into and um, in a file simplification, the, the kind of the file management video. I think, I mean, that's a definite big one for me. Um, so I would call that like the the FreeCAD literacy. I know we've got the basic, basic literacy, but we got to get this uh, kind of like this functional level that we can pretty much very quickly drop anything that's in our mind and, and be effective about how we do that. Like, for example, hearing um, Abraham talking about that, you know, that's, that he definitely needs needs help and that's I mean I think that's true for many other people um, if it's not transparent to him like we, we definitely want to 
get our people on that faster. So, uh, I mean, freak out video, kind of like the the next the next step video, like. Um, so that's that's something I, I definitely want to work on. What else? What else do you guys think that um, that is really important at this time? Like, if if you were to think about your own experience, Joseph, what, which one do, would you say that is? Any comments? Um, yeah, Jose, are you asking what, what do I mean by that? I mean, part of the work here is definitely training our team to be functional and effective on the different things that we do. And the main thing we do is CAD work. Uh, but there's a whole whole bunch of different step steps of how we do the development work, onboarding, how we keep our logs, how we collaborate, the collaborative literacy in general. But what would be the most what would be the most important video, or if we could produce a nice instructional on something that's a real confusion point that could could really be served well by creating a, a short instructional video on it, like like if, if for example Joseph is is writing some scripts and preparing some some training materials. What is the highest priority? Can I give my opinion? Yeah. Can you can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Uh, what I see is that uh, it's my personal experience uh, that there are very high, highly qualified practitioners, like for instance uh, Oliver, and people like me that uh, can do some stuff like that or I can uh, also do some things uh, and uh, th there is a gap there right yeah so you need to match that somehow and uh, I like for instance I, I repeat all the time perhaps not for now but for the future I like the approach of a free code camp because you can learn uh, that there are like steps or gaps that you say, okay, if I want to become a developer, specialize in electronics or in on something else, I have to do this and this and this. Uh -huh. For instance, any, any, any OC developers, you have a roadmap or a checklist of things that you have done to uh, be more proficient. Like, yeah. for instance, replicating a machine or stuff like that. If we are able to, if we are able to set up a roadmap of things yeah. that, okay, this is how you improve as an OC developer, it would be nice. It's something we have to find out, right? uh-huh yeah that's true joseph what are your thoughts on that um i think that in any uh collaborative environment i think the, the general communication is the biggest thing between everybody and then sort of like um not only getting the help resources out there but just making sure everybody's aware of where to find them because that was something I encountered all the time. Um, there was information, but I didn't know how to find it. So uh, everybody I've talked to informally, like Cassie Dixon, I've got a hold of Roberto, um, contacted Cedric, I just started working through um, asking asking folks what, uh, you know, what they found would help them. And almost everybody's put communication up top and then Secondly, sort of like uh, directory or sitemap type stuff that leads them to three, um, just help, just simple help resources. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so after the, the first, so, so what's your thought on after the first basically onboarding video? Um, where do you see that going? I mean, do you think that covers that all, or do we need more on that? And, and uh, Oliver, um, please speak up too. As the, well. the onboarding video... Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Um, the onboarding video gets, gets people through... The onboarding video gets people through 
um, the tasks the, the first week setting up their log and things like that. But as part of everybody's ongoing education, I wanted to be able to link them from that to uh, general instructionals on the programs we use. So I see that as the next step of development, um, coming up with um, material, finding out how we need to use FreeCAD the most, and then just doing uh, targeted videos on that and just gradually filling out all of those those resources. So I was thinking initially to use the 101, you know, our FreeCAD 101, you know, Wiki 101, use them as kind of like um, very temporarily as a, a junk drawer of helpful links and then start going through them and processing them and streamlining them and focusing on what people need the most. Um, <clears throat> And once you, and since they're all named the same way, all that you know, if you make it Caden Live 101, uh, Google Docs 101, FreeCAD 101, um, there's, you know, everybody starts to become really aware of like, oh, this is, I need to know how to do, learn one of these other programs. I'm sure we have a 101 page, and they can find it really easily. Yeah. Yeah. I think an index, starting with a good index like um, what you, yeah, so after, you have there, after, is good. I think an index, starting with a good index. Go, sorry, go ahead. Pardon? What, what, about, what about, no, about an index? No, no, I'm saying that what you have started as the index for basically that one summary page on the wiki for what you have to learn and then linking to further documents. So that, that page serves like a good index to everything else that you would need. That's a good, I think, a good way to organize. Yeah, so I was, I was thinking of... Um, I was thinking of that being an index for what I'm sort of thinking of as the, the, the tools that all of us are going to be using. Um, so I know they're going to be like specialized, you know, different people are going to use specialized tools, but on that page, I just, I thought that'd be sort of a, a channel for um, everybody's getting onboarding and to just link to the tools that all of us, all of us need to, to be familiar with. Yeah. You know, just all the cloud communication and documentation stuff. Yeah. Yep. I agree with that. <laughs> uh, also, Oliver, you had some comments? Can I add something? Yes, please. <clears throat> um, first of all, I find the idea very good what um, uh, Joseph said um, with doing more of the 101 test. Um, the point why I think they are pretty good is especially um, because they are sort of motivating because they give people, I, I think this is much a psychological thing because tools like KeyCat and FreeCat have a very long learning curve and it's a question of psychological motivation to go through it in the end each user can just learn it on its own by doing tutorials and uh, go deep into that stuff and that may take a long time but uh, that this is a hurdle for some people and uh, we should help them beyond that and my suggestion or one further suggestion um, uh, um, uh, adding to what Joseph had, has just said is um, that we should back these people with the possibility to ask others which have more knowledge on that or even which are on the equal level to have a to have a, a, a point where I can go and ask concretely what about what my problem is and then there are one or more experts which uh, can answer uh, on, on, on that that this may be better than trying to proactively uh, uh, try to imagine what kind of people could have. Maybe you will end up with finding out that each individual uh, is, is struggling on another uh, part of the journey or of the uh, learning curve. So um, uh, what I just wanted to suggest is to have a forum page, uh, a forum where people uh, can go and ask others. And for this purpose, uh, I have uh, in our forum in the German OSEG group um, have made a board which I called FreeCAD 
user group, meaning there you can go, ask questions, and hopefully there is someone which answers them and can discuss uh, FreeCAD or KeyCAD or whatever the uh, 101 is, specific things, yeah, and uh, have more pro uh, people uh, uh, taking a look on this problem, maybe it isn't a real problem and you can get a quick answer or it is a problem and then you can work on it uh, together to find out how things work. And uh, the best of all is, um, Josef, you said um, there may be turn out what the most problems are or something. And yes, I think this is in, in the forum page, you can usually stick some uh, uh, entries and uh, one of the most used uh, stick is for having a little FAQ uh, on the on the matter. So meaning there you can collect the, all the questions which are always repeated by some newcomers. So and um, I can, if you want to, can put in our full um, uh, page or a board, a subboard where I write this is uh, only for English speaking and then you can use it or you can also use the OSE forum which I think is a little bit wasted nowadays. Yeah. Uh, never mind, but I think a forum in combination with a user group is the backbone what can help uh, buffer incoming newcomers and help them with their problems and it has a psychological dimension because um, yeah, it, it helps them up, uh, above this uh, psychological hurdle. Yeah, that's my point. Huh. The forum is coming up again. We have a forum that we, we haven't used the forum for a long time. But maybe we could, I mean, that's one way to go. But um, so what's the role of the, net, the, the OSC developers group the, on, the, on the network that opens source ecology .org? Um, Let's see, forum.opensourceecology.org. We have this right now, and it's like it's not used. It last message is like anyone left. Um, we have this. I mean, we could start up a, a page on there called, you know, discussion, whatever we want to call it. Um, Joseph, maybe maybe you and I can discuss that, or I mean, we, we can get that up and running. I mean, but the question is like, is that going to be managed, or is it going to be like? Uh, like if Joseph, you could if somebody could actually manage that and answer there, so it doesn't just go all over the place. Um, we could we could do that. I mean, we could we could just re reboot the forum and, and say, okay, we go to there to to get our answers, uh, our questions answered. It's one way to do it. <clears throat> um, I understood you very much shredded. Mm -hmm. Again, but um, concerning the network thing, um, I think it's not perfectly suited on that because it yeah. is more like a Facebook structure. This is good for announcing or yeah. things or for pointing um, uh, people towards that. Um, and uh, I think, of course, we can use both. But a forum has normally um, a better navigation possibilities. I can go through the topics and see whether my thing, is, yeah. my question is there, or I can even do a full text search on it. And all this yeah. stuff is in Facebook-like interfaces. But Facebook uh, or this thing is good to point to say, oh, there is an interesting yeah. Uh, yeah. question discussion going on in the forum and then set a link there and then you are there like like that this is how i would uh, uh, handle these things right no the forum definitely like we're just calling out for a forum that should be there um what who takes care of your forum is that are you managing that or of, of what the the osc germany forum and I just clicked on it. Can you send a link to that? No, this one doesn't. Um, um, forum, okay, there's the forum. OpenSourceEcology.de Yeah, there it is. PHB bulletin board. So yeah, I see it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a link. I 
and um, yeah, I've, I've introduced that a uh, few days ago, so up to now there is not much tra traffic there, but uh, we can use that. I just yeah. be right on it. Uh, this is English for English speaking or something, and then we can simply use it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we could do that. That's, that's one way to do it. Um, since you're an active member there, yeah, it's a way to share Very resources. Cool. The only thing is one. The only thing is users must registrate if they want to post something there, but um, of course uh, the FAQ things and stuff and topics can be read it from everyone. Yeah. Who is your forum manager there? Who manages that? Like who's the, your web admin? Me. Oh, you are? Um, we, we, have, we have an admin team and there are others which uh, can also help or act responsible about but most stuff there is from me and I have the uh, admin rights and can do things. If I'm dying in a car accident or something, uh -huh. then there will be others from the admin team. So uh, it is safe. I see. And then um, did you actually install that or you had somebody else install that? Um, in this case, it was another guy from the admin team, but I had also installed these types of forums uh, in my life several times. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, right, because we had we we were using vanilla forums, and we kind of wanted to migrate from that because one was unmanaged, really, and then second, it didn't have some of the features we were looking for. But yeah, let's take that discussion up. We actually got a another guy on a team, Michael Altfield, who's a web guy. Uh, Linux admin guy so maybe, maybe we can revisit maybe right now would be a good time to revisit that question so I can follow up with that okay okay but let's maybe uh, hold this uh, so that's good points and hopefully we're getting some uh, feedback on the highest priority training materials page here but let's go right into the since we don't want to want to get on track on the meeting here on the, the filament extruder so maybe have Abe fill us in on that on the latest status there Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah, I've been uh, monitoring everything, I think, on the uh, network and other stuff. So I think I'm fairly up to date on most of the things going on that have been discussed. So um, I started more work on the master index and um, trying to figure out how to best organize that right now. Uh, as well as I, I think that the um, the wiki page part library uh, still needs probably some more sections and things. I think I posted some, at least one item there before, and maybe we need to look at how uh, that gets organized better too. May edit that some more um, just to figure out how all the parts are going to be divided, because uh, I think we can end up with the, obviously each type of part together in the uh, different subsections, including the plastic and the purchased metal parts, but um, <clears throat> I've started linking uh, some of those things into a master index and a spreadsheet anyway. And, uh, to do that, I was reviewing certain documents. I looked at different templates, and I think I have a good idea of what, what we want for that. Uh, Let's I did see. look at the D3 development template. That was a little broader um, of a design, but um, I was just kind of going with uh, a design that included the build materials as well as the links to all the CAD. Uh, and, so and which page? Uh, the send me the master. Uh, videos and things like that. Yeah, can you send the link to to the main working page? Okay. It was on my wiki. Yeah, I'll add that. I believe it's shared. Let's see. Hey, yeah, what's this? All this. Everybody accessing that? Okay, okay. Wait, this one, Abe. Wait, I, I, I'm a little confused. What, what, where's yeah. the link to that on uh, 
on the Lyman Filament Extruder page, did that disappear? The, the link to what? To your working document from the Lyman Filament Extruder page. Lyman Extruder. I think. Let's see the uh, the slide document. Or yeah. Yeah. The wiki. Yeah. The, well, the it, it would be linked through the wiki Let's to see. the Google slide document. as well as the extruder there's some parts that, that are uh, overlapping I think but mm -hmm. mostly just uh, stuff that we're going to reuse like wire and, and small connectors and things like that uh, some of the screws maybe <coughs> and some of those things are, are different but they could probably be changed if we want to do that eventually uh, to use more of the same parts so that there's not so many different items but that might require a little bit of redesign on certain parts i'm not sure <coughs> about how uh, flexible some of those plastic parts are and i i haven't heard um anything back from mr lyman about the cad i know that's been kind of uh possibly holding up certain things mm -hmm. i you know he said he's working on that because it would be nice to have the overall CAD files but I think it's probably going to take him a little bit to get those together yeah <laughs> uh, let me, let me having see. those will probably make a lot of things go faster because we're going to have some trouble figuring out some of his parts too I know there was some different parts in the files and the zip files themselves and there are differences and it's not obvious why uh, so he had some lack of organization, I think, in, even in those zip files from Thingiverse. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are our next steps here? So I just put in the link to the working document on the Lyman Film and Extruder page. But um, let's see. Cassie did the, well, yeah, the bill steps, materials, um, which was good. Um, some of that is done there. Looks like more of the same. I'm going to keep working on the master index since I'm listed uh, on that. I put all the links together. Um, I know some people are working on other things now. So it's the the wonder and the spooler in the wiki page. Uh, the part library in the wiki for the uh, extruder is probably uh, still needs a lot of work. Right, right. Um, let's see, so you'll do more of the same as far as um, you're saying master bill of materials. Um, what's the, let's see, that's the extruder so Cassie, you know what Cassie, the work Cassie did, right, the, on the spooler? Are you aware of? You're breaking up. You're, sorry, you're breaking up a lot, Martin. For me. Did you see Cassie's uh, bill of materials? That? Did you see Cassie's? I did. I do have. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I see your bill of materials. Yep. Yeah. Um, 
spreadsheet. Yeah, so maybe, uh, yeah, maybe uh, embed yours. Let's probably embed yours into onto that page. So publish to the web, embed that. Yeah, so as far as your document, I'm going to put that into the extruder part here. Um, so you're going through a, an exhaustive parts list and you're trying to put in uh, direct direct links to all the sourcing, right? Yeah, I'm going to add links to everything, uh, all the parts, uh, both the plastic stuff on the wiki and uh, purchasing links for the bomb and the... Uh, the master index uh yep some of that could be redundant i guess but um if we want everything together yeah we do so um what percentage completion do you think you are at right now for the for the extruder part uh i've put that on my wiki uh log page and let's see, for I, I think they're pretty well done with with the visual bombs and those documents. Uh, best I can tell, as we change something that I don't see right now. But um, I'm I'm just kind of getting started in the master index. Uh, I want to get the layout of that good. So I figured I'm only like 20% done with the index, and I don't have everything copied in there uh, quite yet. And I trying to get the columns and rows organized so that it's uh, more visually uh, understandable as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. So maybe uh, if you and Cassie are working on it, maybe uh, Cassie did a good job on the, the bill of materials. The next step there, I think, would be if she could start. Uh, so, so the next step was to get some of the rough files pulled from all over the place as far as getting the the part library completed right just start pulling in all the files and everything that's the idea yeah i just have to get in a lot of links yeah i copied uh i think a lot of stuff from uh, yeah, file links. uh visual or not the visual bomb, but the the spreadsheet okay it was made uh for the bomb bill of materials and still got to organize uh, parts and any overlap and, and links um, there's and a certain amount of links on the wiki and I don't want to uh, add those yet because I think there's going to be some changes there it's not uh, that complete yet um, so in your master index are you so we're gonna we should probably do a separate file for the filament winder yeah which Cassie already has so keep it to that so one like in her uh, like in hers she doesn't have the links to the CAD files which we should probably add that and keep yours as is but just keep it to the extruder part so we have one one spreadsheet for the extruder and one spreadsheet for the winder does that sound sound right Okay, separate them. Yeah, okay, I would say I was so, uh, going to merge yeah. some of that together for overlap, but I uh -huh. uh, it's kind of a system. But yeah, we could we could do separate spreadsheets that might be clearer. Yeah, it's um, maybe maybe do two because each one of them is so long that, that spreadsheet would get really really long. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's just keep it keep it uh, modular at that place. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's continue that. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm okay. So so Cassie will have follow up with her regarding continuing that and getting the what you have done, which is to also include the the actual CAD files in there, like what you're doing here in that same spreadsheet. You have the CAD files, which is good. Okay. Um What else is to be said about the extruder? Anything else? I think that's it. I posted onto the network there, I think, under uh, where you mentioned Cassie.
she's worked on the building materials. So, uh-huh. but I don't I don't see where she's commented that. I'll have to discuss that more there. Mm-hmm. What is needed. Uh, All right. And I don't see. See, I looked over everybody's logs too. I didn't see uh, anything recent on. See Cassie's log that was new. So I think I'm up to date on on everything. Yeah, yeah, that sounds sounds like okay, okay. So where we are, where are we? The overall meeting here. As far as the various role allocations, I just maybe go to that as a final thing to to close up here. But um, if we look at everybody's work, let's see if everybody's uh, it's pretty much covered here. Um, let's see. So Joseph, you and I, will, we will continue on the, the dev orientation stuff. Chaz is continuing. Oliver is continuing. Abraham. Um, March and I'm I'm gonna continue on the file simplification documents to get the people involved like Israel Cedric IO get them involved on, on the file simplification Roberto's need to check in on where he is on the instructional video for language agnostic instructionals Dixon uh, Abe you're moving forward Cassie. Uh, we'll get her going website work with Jose. Follow up with that. Okay, I think that kind of covers everybody for what, what's brought to the table this time around. Um, let's see, so anything else to, to close up here? I think that kind of covers what we're all up to. Comments on the priority training materials. Take a look at that. Okay, so I think that's that's probably probably what we have for now. Uh, I was going to try to talk a little bit about um, the process management aspect, which is. Um, we should have the, um, just to cover that briefly, the development spreadsheet is an index of all the different things that we develop. So for each working page, the idea is to have one of these development spreadsheets copied and pasted into the working page. Like for example, we've got the, the extruder, the torch table, the 3D printer. Each one of them should have the master bu- the development template index on there and uh, each one of them should be refined so that some things that are not relevant to that development should be like just uh, just simply erased from this development spreadsheet and therefore we can track overall what's the percentage of completion of a certain project like one of the uh, column not shown here is the zero to ten how complete is each step so we should do that for every every single project that we're working on as, as the different projects pile on to the to the developments uh, that's just a comment on on that and we can get a burn down graph off of those but we but we really need to yeah we need a project ma- process manager to kind of like do that and I was gonna see if uh, how we can have other people get involved in, in more process management work but I don't have a clear strategy for that since all of us are pretty busy on the, the development work um, don't see a clear clear thing for for process managers coming into into play um, so we'll wait we'll wait on that part as far as um, the next meeting what I'd like to call for is uh, I'd like to move the meeting to Tuesdays that's definitely better since Monday that's I think pretty busy for a lot of people as as people maybe kind of wrap up from the weekend or get going on their new week and I know it's kind of tough for me to prepare the meeting for the first thing in the morning on, on Mondays. I'd like to see if we can have the meeting on, on Tuesday, like a 
does the 1 p.m. work work for everybody here? It seems to work for the people here, but then we also missed a lot of people who are not here, so I'm not sure about that. But but I'll email everybody and see if we can have that. Does does 1 p.m. work on Tuesday for people who are here? Abraham, okay, good. Joseph, good. Um, Oliver, are you you good for that? And Jose. this time it's kind of late for Abraham okay yeah yeah same time same time 1 p.m. would be really good because it's uh, kind of gives the full morning to, to prepare and all that yeah we definitely want to go with a consistent meeting time so I, I want to say from now on till forever <laughs> on Tuesdays um, and for Jose, it's as long as it's not 11 a.m. Yeah, yeah, 1 p.m. So, so 1 p.m. Tuesday. So let's keep that for forever, and then also do do a similar pattern. Let let's let's meet on at the 1 p.m. time, and then the torch table and extruder towards the later part of the meeting. So we first first part is we we go through the the 3D printer work, and then after that we go into the extruder and CNC torch table. On my side I've started work uh, I I've have some detailed documents on calibration of the 3D printers so right now tomorrow and uh, this weekend or uh, the, the, the finish of this week I'll be working hard on the the starting the getting the print cluster up getting the high quality prints off of our existing machines and we really got to schedule a date for like within a week or two I want to start scheduling a date for the next pr printer workshop we're we're kind of behind like I feel like we're we were in initially considering end of June but it'll be more like like uh, the first half of July for the next 3d printer workshop because we we need four weeks of advanced time for for an announcement to come up um, but yeah so we're we're kind of uh, a little behind but what I, what I want to do is definitely print the parts the 3d printer parts with our current 3d print the the new 3d printer so to show that that everything is working and give confidence to people as far as what they're getting so one of the the milestones for that is making sure that um, the 3d printers that we're making are working really well high quality prints so we can demonstrate that and show a whole army of these so I have three right now actually three of them are from the last time that we have here working from the workshop built during the workshop and before the workshop so I'll get those going and possibly like a couple more um, yeah and then um, Oliver is working on his so I want to have about five to eight yeah like half a dozen or so 3d printers are d3ds that are cranking out parts for the next time around the, and I'd like to see if we can get 24 people to show up to the next workshop. There's been a couple of people that have co contacted me already as far as when next workshop is. But um, yeah, continue on the just refining this one. But we do need to have like as soon as the library parts are made, the simplified CAD files, we need to design the 13 inch, finish the design on a 13 inch and a 10 inch. Because I have a whole load of frames that are still left from the last workshop for people because nobody wanted kind of like the inter intermediate part, intermediate sizes. Everyone got the 8 inch, like there were two 8 inches, three 8 inches, 8 inches, and the rest of them, 8 of them, the other ones were the 16 inches. So I've got a bunch of those 13 inch and 10 inch frames that are left over. So as far as the next workshop, we don't have a date right now. I mean, uh, early July, uh, as soon as we can make it with a, with a month's. Um, lead time but the deal is we got to have that website up so the the first thing is we got to finish the website and announce the event on our website I think that would be a good thing um, and then then get our cl cluster going get some more pictures nice really nice uh, pictures for everybody else um, well the existing I want to have a nice video or, or a picture of a 3d print cluster that's uh, that's working doing our 3d printing okay so uh, I think that that covers it for now though so so we gotta quit here and uh, keep going from there so we'll continue on the email and follow up on the on the the network so thanks a lot everybody and we'll, we'll keep in touch thank you